watching Henry AI Labs. This video will explain the variational autoencoder GAN, known as the VAE GAN framework. The high level motivation is that autoencoders take in an input image and then encode them with neural networks into a low dimensional vector representation. They then have a different neural network called the decoder that takes the vector representation and re tries to reconstruct it into the original image. The way that an autoencoder is trained is based on the pixel wise distance between the reconstructed image and the original image. The idea behind the variational autoencoder in the GAN is to get towards a more semantic loss function than the pixel-wise distance metrics. So GANs uh, use the generator and the discriminator framework such that they can have a more semantic loss function that avoids the element-wise similarity measure. Another interesting uh, loss function for the reconstruction is to use features from pre-trained classifier. So for example, if you have a ResNet 50 that you might train on ImageNet classification, you could look at the features on, say, layer 48 and the difference between the original image and the reconstructed image, and you could use this to evaluate how well the decoder has reconstructed the image from the low dimensional vector representation. So the overview of the variational autoencoder GAN is like this. You take an input image and you encode it into a low dimensional vector, and then this low dimensional vector is gonna be regularized with the uh, reparameterization of the variational autoencoder and the KL divergence from a normal distribution, which will be uh, explained in more detail in the next slide. And then you, from this uh, low dimensional vector, you decode it with the generator. You now replace the decoder with the generator. They become the same thing in this framework. So the generator takes the low dimensional vector and it produces an image from it. So now the evaluation of this image is done by the intermediate features of the discriminator, as well as the discriminator's task of, is this a reconstructed image or is this one of the original images? To review the differences between a regular autoencoder and a variational autoencoder, First start with the audio autoencoder. An autoencoder takes an image in, encodes it into a low dimensional vector, and then decodes it into an image. A variational autoencoder modifies this framework by mapping points to a Gaussian space rather than like some direct point in the low dimensional vector space. So the encoder has two outputs. It uh, outputs a vector of means for each dimension. So let's say you have a five dimensional vector that you're trying to map the image to. You would have mean one, mean two, mean three, mean four, mean five. And then in addition, it parameterizes the covariance matrix of the uh, Gaussian. But in the variational autoencoder, you assume that there is like no correlation and that it's a diagonal covariance matrix. So really, you're just uh, outputting a set of variances. So it would be variance 1, variance 2, variance 3. And this is how you reparameterize the encoder so that it, it just structures the uh, space of how it encodes the data into the low dimensional vector. So it's structured better and it has much nicer properties for interpolation, which is the idea of, of using a variational autoencoder to, uh, as a generative model so that you can design new images, new audio from the uh, low dimensional encoding space. The generative adversarial network framework is another approach to generative modeling. Unlike the adversarial autoencoder, I mean the variational autoencoder, it doesn't uh, encode the images into a latent space, rather it just samples uh, random vectors from a normal distribution. This is an interesting uh, similarity with the variational autoencoder because the variational autoencoder uses the KL divergence with the parameterization of the mean and uh, variance to uh, sort of enforce the encoder to align the data in a normal distribution. So in a way, the Z vectors sampled in the generator and the GAN are pretty similar to the uh, vectors encoded by the encoder and the variational autoencoder. So the GAN adds this uh, discriminator versus generator component to the training, which is something that we would want with our variational autoencoder. The discriminator uh, looks at the generated images and the original images and just classifies which one is which, and then they optimize each other in the adversarial game. So this is the overview of the variational autoencoder plus the GAN together. You start with the input image, and then you encode it into a low-dimensional vector. The way that these low-dimensional uh, vectors are encoded is based on the reparameterization of the variational autoencoder, and they're trained with the KL divergence from a standard normal distribution. So the generator network then samples this Z vector and uses it to produce a reconstructed image. So now, the way that the reconstructed image is compared with the original image is through the intermediate uh, convolutional features in discriminator, as well as the discriminator's uh, classification of real versus fake. Putting this all together, there's three loss functions used to train the model. There's the loss in the prior. This is the loss used to enforce the encoder part of the variational autoencoder to be uh, near a standard normal distribution. This is the KL divergence between the uh, 
uh, encoded latent space, and then a normal distribution. The second loss term is the difference between the reconstructed image and the original image in terms of their uh, the intermediate features on the discriminator. And then the final term, loss term is the, the generator says it's real or fake. So this is the flow of losses during training. And so somewhat interestingly, the discriminator doesn't use the intermediate uh, loss fun function in its loss optimization because this would just cause it to look for really subtle details. And then also an interesting note that they put is that they find that when they use the GAN loss in the encoder, they get worse results compared to not using it. And I thought that was kind of interesting. I didn't really understand why they uh, found this result. So to train the decoder, they have this interesting analogy with the neural style transfer, how they weight the content of the image and the style. So they reason that the intermediate feature distance between the reconstructed image and the uh, original image is like the content of the image, like how similar is it to the original image. And then the GAN loss is like the style of the data set really because it's not quite particular to this one individual instance. So putting it all together, the algorithm works as follows. You have uh, parameters for the encoder, the decoder, and the discriminator. You sample a random batch of images. You encode the, uh, you encode the batch into the low dimensional vector space. And then you have a loss function on how the vector space was constructed. Then you decode the images from the vector space. Then you have this loss function that uh, measures how dis uh, dissimilar the reconstructed images are from the original images in terms of the intermediate features in the discriminator. And then you have the GAN loss function, and then you have the updates to the parameters with this waiting on the uh, decoder's update. And then also, interestingly, you see uh, which loss terms go to which models. This is the uh, convolutional neural network architectures used in their VAE GAN paper. In the encoder side, they use a series of uh, convolutional layers to take an input image and compress it into a vector of dimensionality 2048. The decoder uh, flattens, takes this vector, passes it through a dense layer, and then uses a series of upsampling convolutional layers to arrive at the final image. And then the discriminator also has a similar architecture to any other convolutional neural network. Most notably, it's, it's not very deep. It's only like uh, five convolutional layers and two fully connected layers. So the data set that they test their VAE GAN model out with is the Celeb A data set. This is a really popular data set for testing out generative models mainly because they're all centered in the middle of the frame. There's not too much variance in the data set. And also, it's a pretty large data set. It's got about 203,000 images. They each have 40 binary attributes, attributes describing like characteristics of the face, such as eyeglasses, like the hair. And then, uh, so they're all 64 by 64 resolution, which isn't uh, too difficult for generative models. So these are some of the results from the uh, standard variational autoencoder the variational autoencoder that adds the intermediate discriminator feature loss to the reconstruction metric, the combination of the variational autoencoder and the GAN, and then a generative adversarial network by itself. So more interestingly is with variational autoencoders, you can have a training and a test set, like you can uh, train the uh, Z embedding space on the encoder part with the training set, and then you would pass in a new image from the test set and see how well it reconstructs it. So it's pretty interesting to see how the, in this case, you do see a pretty significant improvement over with the VAE GAN compared to the standard variational autoencoder. And then another interesting result is the way that they can uh, interpolate in the latent space. Like they, in their paper, they claim that this is a disentangled representation they've learned. But I, I guess I'd, I'd say the modern view of disentangled representations means that you just have you know, one component of the vector that you can shift and change it, uh, the, you know, the attribute. But what they find instead is they would take, they would use the binary attribute labels to find the mean vectors of the images in the latent space. And then they would take the average of this. So it's like they're adding the bald vector to an image. But this vector has values in all the dimensions. It isn't just like a disentangled, uh, you know, one single row of the vector. So some future work that they talk about is replacing the second loss term with a Siamese network, although it would require label data. And then they talk about, instead of using the discriminator's uh, intermediate features, what if you use like a ResNet trained on ImageNet classification or something like that. Thanks for watching this explanation of the VAE GAN. Please subscribe to Henry AI Labs for more deep learning videos.